So I recommend you watch the first Minecraft export video, but this video is going to reduce the amount of labour involved in converting the materials considerably, so don't follow the process in the first video, just understand the steps and then you'll see how things can be improved. Right, here's a folder where I store lots of files and I know where this folder is and I'm going to need to navigate to it because we're going to save things in a slightly different way. So I'm going to create a new folder in here and call it um, plus map. So use the plus so I know it's going to be the first folder in the list. And then I'm going to launch the exporter. So you'll have seen this in the other video and it's already browsed to where my map is so I can just load it in. And then I'm going to select an area to export, hit the export button and I'm going to modify these export options now. The first thing we need to do is make sure it's sending it to the folder where I've the new folder I've just created. So I've had to make this video a few times for various reasons. So I, I've had to keep renaming the folder so we'll have to, so I can show you browsing it out. So I'm just going to browse to that folder now and it's uh, you we don't, it's up to you where you save this but this is where I've saved mine. So you just browse to it and hit save so it's got that location stored there. Now if you look in the texture options it is going to create a text folder in that folder when we export. I'm going to export the alpha channel as a separate file. Although this wasn't necessary, it, it might be useful to have that because we could modify that to create effects in the material. But before we do any exporting, because we're going to use this option here, use single texture file, it needs a reference that's the texture UV map and that's generated at this point by doing this export. So it export all textures as a single file, that's vital. This control here allows us to scale the pixels up so it makes the maps bigger which would mean if we were to use picked interpolation for example then if it was just single pixels they'd all blur into a mod so if we export at a larger scale we'll be able to see the map easier as, as well as it having the option of doing some processing on the maps themselves should we want to do that. Anyway hit the Minecraft button now and that's exporting the textures and that just takes a few seconds and if I navigate to where that's happening in here you can see it's created this text folder here we've got our PNG map which is the transparencies here's the texture UV and here's the textures themselves this is the critical file so if we go back to our export options here we now need to browse out this UV texture that we've just created so again navigate to where this folder was created here it is so it's in maps come on let me go into there I'm not very good at this I'm clicking too fast go into textures select texture UV save that so now when we hit export and just have a quick rundown of these options selected render biomes uh, render world side render entities even though I've not managed to spot one yet create a separate object for each material that'll be useful for us in Bryce because it means we can select the lava for example and make it glow uh, do not allow duplicate uh, vertices, yeah I've selected that. This one here, use single texture file. We've found where that file is, we're ready to use it. So just hit export and that will send the map into that folder that we created. So I'm going to launch Bryce now, bring in the map and because everything's got the same UV map texture on it, we can modify them for the alpha map all at once. So that saves a lot of work. So delete the ground plane, go file, import object, navigate to where that was saved here in maps and select the object open just check that box there and it loads it in for us everything selected so go into the material select blend transparency and put a blob in transparency and that's sorted out the transparency map for every texture we've got here because we've all got the same texture on the only thing is some things we'll want to modify the texture on further for certain effects so although we've got our transparency sorted there's a flame in this doorway just above the door you can see it in the wireframe but you can't see it in the render yet so if we go to that object there which is Minecraft torch flame which is all the torch flames in this map that's been exported go to the material lab we have the option of popping in a blob in ambience so it's picking that color up from the map and increasing its ambience just in that material 
So now the flame can be made to glow. We want to use global ambient to make it brighter, set the global ambient up and then that makes it glow. The same applies to lava, the same applies to if you wanted to say select this uh, ice material here and add some reflection to it. So if we made it 50% reflective then that allows that material to be modified and not all the others in here. You can see the leaf transparencies work, so this saved a hell of a lot of work really, which is a bonus. Now, the only other consideration I will leave with you before I finish this video is this. If we go to where the texture's saved, we've got this texture map uh, and as the alpha map, and we've got this texture map here. We could modify the map that's generated, the, the alpha map, so that it's using that to produce things like the glow effect we were looking at with the flame. So these could have a, a map generated separately, these objects that glow like this furnace flame and that. It would be quite fiddly to do that, but once you'd created that once, that would solve your problem for every map you brought in. You wouldn't need to select the lava every single time you brought a different map in. You could just have this uh, additional texture that you'd created on standby that uh, allows things to glow and bring that into an appropriate channel. So supposing we were doing it with, I don't know, uh, there should be some lava here somewhere. Supposing we've got lava. But it wouldn't matter because we just select, instead of selecting the lava and modifying the material as I show you and put the amb ambient blob in there and uh, select that, you would select all and go into the material and then you would have a separate ambient alpha here for example, that you'd load in separately from wherever you'd saved it. So supposing that was our a separate ambient alpha, then that would drive the ambient channel directly, like so, and everything would glow according to that. Now, as I've not created that separate file, everything's going to glow according to whatever the alpha was set in, in, that, in that file. But there's an example, there's a possible solution so that your map import becomes incredibly efficient and you just have to create that file. That's going to take some time. If I actually manage to get around to doing that and it works okay, this is only in theory because I've not really tested this idea properly, things sort of, I make the videos as I go along and make things up as I go along, you can probably tell, then I will make that file available for you and that will save you time in the future. But anyway, I thought that was uh, a helpful addition there to uh, to the other video because having this uh, transparency option, not having to go through all the things on billboards, will save a lot of time. Anyway, there you go. That's the end of the video. I hope you found that uh, informative, if not interesting, and uh, you'll go on to experiment with your own Minecraft map exports.